Oh, yeah, it's recording. Okay. Three, two, one. Football Wednesday this week with Mason and Jack. The Terps set to close out their season against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Um, it's good to be back uh, playing football after the cancellation last week. Yeah, it's been two two weeks since Maryland's last played, and I'm excited to see them back out there with, like we were talking about off-air, 90% of their players back from the COVID situation that they have been dealing with. Yeah, and that's what Coach Loxley said yesterday in his press conference. Another thing that came out is some finally changes on the depth chart uh, for the Terps. Ruben Hippolyte, a guy that's been on our shows in the past, uh, he gets the start at middle linebacker, Gote, uh, who started the rest of the season, moved under him. Sam O oh finally moved to the defensive end position. And the Terps finally starting to, I guess, come around to the fact that they'll be playing uh, in the 4-3, which has worked well for them. Yeah, you saw that kind of work out earlier in the season. And against Rutgers, who doesn't have a strong offense, I think it's gonna, they're going to play well and hopefully come out with the win. And that, that's kind of what you have to be expecting. Maryland, I believe, for the first time this year, is favored in a game by seven and a half points over Rutgers. And I think it's warranted. The Scarlet Knights just lost to Penn State 23-7. to I saw a lot of that game. Not much offense from Rutgers. But if you look back a little bit, they beat Purdue. They took Michigan to the wire and put up 40. Uh, it's kind of, a, you know, you don't know what, what Rutgers team you're going to see this year. Yeah, I think a key for Maryland this week is going to be their rushing attack. Hopefully they'll have most of their running back room back. Uh, you saw last week we were talking about against Penn State, Rutgers. They don't let up almost 250 yards rushing. And earlier this year against Illinois, they let up over 300. So if they can get Jake Funk going, a couple of their running backs out of the backfield, I think they'll, they'll be in a good spot to win this game. Yeah, and a big point on there is the return of Teon Fleet Davis, the turf power back. He'll finally be suiting up. Uh, this week, I believe Shaq Smith, the linebacker, uh, Coach Loxley said, is still unavailable on his senior day. And kind of to that point, it's senior day for only seven Terps this year, but it's definitely some key players. Jake Funk, as you just mentioned, uh, Johnny Jordan on the offensive line. But is it really a true senior day? You know, these guys can come back and, and play next year if they want to. Yeah, it's it's kind of mixed emotions. I, some of them will de definitely leave, but like you said, some could come back. But I think it's just going to be – it's going to be weird with no fans, but just a day of celebration, and they'll, they'll be happy about it. Yeah, and to go along with that, the Terps uh, look like they're going to be pulling out the script Terps uniforms that they debuted at last year. We'll see if it's they're the same uh, jerseys and look. I believe that it will be just because they didn't sell any of the memorabilia or auction off any of the memorabilia from last year's game. So I think we'll see the classic uh, Terps look. One or two players to look for from Rutgers, Jack. Isaiah Pacheco, they have, they have a great running back. I think when, when they've won games, they've controlled the turnover battle and then also controlled the time of possession, which is because of their great running attack. So if, they, if Maryland can control Isaiah Pacheco, maybe get them into third downs because they're not great, just under 40%, get them off the field early and often. Don't let them control the time of possession because that's how they win games is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the DC, Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. And a lot like for Rutgers, uh, what Maryland faced last year, you know, they have a handful of good players that kind of carried over, but the size isn't there, and, and they did try to pull JUCOs like the Terps did. And Maryland, you know, I think they got near top tier uh, when it came to the junior college players with uh, Mokite and Finau in the middle have been really effective. But for Rutgers, uh, the size just isn't there yet. And I, it's really stuck out when I was watching them play against Penn State this past week. And, you know, you're, you're looking at two programs that are on, definitely on the rise, but one being Maryland uh, a little bit further ahead than Rutgers. Yeah, and we were talking about some key Rutgers players. Mason, who do you think should uh, stand out for Maryland if they're going to win this game? For Maryland, I think it's got to be your guys up front. Uh, you talked about the running game for Rutgers, what they try and do. Their quarterback's a little bit uh, mobile. He wears number zero uh, for the Scarlet Knights. It's got to be, you know, Finau uh, and Chime and, and those guys really doing a nice job of containing the quarterback. They have not played, uh, talking about Maryland, you haven't gone up against many quarterbacks that run the ball 
Uh, Minnesota's quarterback really wasn't mobile at all. Peyton Ramsey in that game, the first game of the season against Northwestern was just a blowout. Uh, and Sean Clifford was banged up. So if you kind of look at what Maryland's played against, it's a little bit of a different look, you know, more of an option scheme. And I think those uh, linebackers have to fill their gaps and the defensive line has to just continue to eat blocks the way they have. But the guys that are definitely poised for a big game, as always, are Chance Campbell. And I think Ruben Hippolyte, if he, if he gets to go, uh, he'll have another big game. Yeah, and for me, I think it's going to be stopping the run. So I'm going to go with a 31-20 to 20 win for Maryland. What about you? I think it's going to be a little bit – I think the Terps win by a little bit more than that. Uh, the slant game will look right. I think Tonga Vailoa will kind of pick up his game. Uh, week to week, he's kind of been, you know, a little bit all over the map when things don't go well early. I think Maryland gets it going with the receivers back and, and the Terps uh, top the Scarlet Knights. I'm going to say 41 to 20. It's interesting. I just – they haven't played in a couple of weeks. Leah didn't look great the last time they were out there. I know it was against a like, tough Indiana defense. I just – I don't trust this Maryland team all that much. So I'm going to go with the closer game. But it was an interesting take. I, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and I think that, that that interesting take is from both sides is kind of warranted. You know, one says that Rutgers' defense just isn't all there. You know, bad Penn State team beat them, bad Michigan team put up 45 points against them. And the other side is completely true right. You know, Maryland's kind of bounced all over the map. They scored 11 points the last time they played. Uh, but I think this is a big test. This is the game, if you're Michael Oxley in Maryland, that you have to win. You know, you got to show that you can beat bad teams in this conference, and those have – been Indiana and Rutgers well this year Indiana is really good but Maryland's always split those games against bad teams if they win again on Saturday I think they go three and zero against the bad teams they've played being Minnesota Penn State and Rutgers and that is how you get a team that wins six or seven games a year and and is more just better positioned to be successful this is a big game uh, for this program really to show that they're not that they are getting better yeah, and just as you were saying, uh, this this Rutgers team, Maryland should beat. And let's not get it wrong, Rutgers is a lot better than they have been in the past, but they're still not great. And Maryland's shown promise earlier in the year. So I definitely think you're right. This is a must win for Maryland this, this weekend. And I think we'll leave it at that. Must win game for the Terps to finish out the regular season, if you want to call it that. You know, we do have uh, next week's crossover game pending. I'm not sure if this marks the end of the regular season or next week does. Uh, I kind of think the consensus is this is your end of your normal season. Next week's just kind of a uh, air quotes playoff game, if you want to say it like that. Uh, but it's must win land for the Terps to finish out with a three and two record. Mason Viner and Jack Rothenberg, as always here on what I guess we'll call the final regular season football Tuesday slash Wednesday of the year. And as always, thanks for watching.